Good morning, everybody. Or, I guess I don't know if it's morning for you, but it's morning for me. I've just made myself a cup of coffee. And today I'm going to be working on shading in this piece. So I thought I would go ahead and film it, bring you guys along with, and do some chit chatting as I'm sort of filling in these shapes. This one is a very different sort of drawing for me. You might be thinking, well, it's dot work, so how can it be that different? But typically I don't do any sort of this line work or the outlining. And so that phase of the drawing felt like a big difference for me, but I'm really enjoying how it turned out in this piece. And I did contemplate just leaving it as the line work, but I don't know, it didn't quite feel finished, so I am going back in and shading in all of the different shapes. You might see a lot of them I've kind of started but haven't finished as I just bounce around from piece to piece, and that's probably what I'll be doing this morning. But I don't know, maybe we'll see if we can focus on one at a time. I think first I'm going to be focusing in on this lemon or at least I was thinking lemon when I drew it. I suppose in black and white it could be either a lemon or an orange. Not that it really matters, I think both are summery sort of things, summer fruits. Although when I drew it, I was thinking of lemon because especially out in like suburban neighborhoods, which I grew up in a very suburban neighborhood and now that I live in a house again, instead of a like downtown apartment, I also live in a pretty suburban area. And during the summer, lots and lots of people have garage sales. And one of my favorite things in the world is seeing like little kids with their lemonade stands. I am very very rarely able to resist them. I just think that they're so cute. It's actually kind of a surprise to myself that I never ran one as a kid. But when my when my mom would hold garage sales, I remember always wanting to be around to help be the cashier, to give people change, or I I've always been very into drawing ever since I was a little kid and she'd have me make like little signs for all the items telling like, people what price they were. Or as I got a little bit older, I would make bracelets out of yarn, those little like braided bracelets and I would sell those. to be so worried lately about drawing and not letting my ink smudge. Around here, here being like the, the Seattle and the just outside of Seattle area, we've been having a bit of a heat wave. It's been getting up. Not, not as bad this week as it has been earlier in the summer, but been getting up in the 80s and 90s, which I'm from Indiana where it very regularly gets up to those sort of temperatures in the summer, but it's a little different out here, mostly because a lot of places just really aren't built for it, especially uh, my husband and I's house currently does not have any, any working air conditioning, and so it's just been a very very hot and sweaty time and I feel like my hands are always gross too. Which is part of why I'm filming this in the morning and not later in the day when it's going to be even hotter. It's not too bad right now. And you know it's not too bad because I still made a, a hot cup of coffee and I'm not dying with it. I'm 
have such an interesting texture. I don't know why I've never really drawn fruit before. I'm not just like making this up as I go along either. I um, I have my laptop on my desk with me and my art is usually very, pretty heavily reliant on reference photos. And for this one, I did use a lot of reference photos because I was drawing objects that I don't know how to draw. But I really tried to stay away from only using one reference photo for each object. I really tried to make sort of a composite. And so I would just kind of search for images of the thing and then look at several of them for different parts. And so right now I'm looking at like four different lemon wedges, <laughs> trying to kind of pick and choose the things that I like about each of them. I'm interested to watch this back and see how well my phone camera picks up the audio of my pen tapping. I hope it's not an annoying sound. I actually really like it. I've gotten very, very used to the like repetitive noise of it. I do already find myself kind of getting bored <laughs> of drawing the lemon wedge and so I'll probably finish this section right here and jump on to something else. Let me shade this little piece in the middle first. Okay, I don't really know how I'm gonna shade this toad yet, but I figured I would go ahead and just give him like a little, a little dot base coat. I really love how his line work turned out. I think he looks so cute. I'm not sure how much of a like realistic toad he looks like, but I'm still very happy with him. I think he's adorable. When I was drawing him, I couldn't stop thinking about um, the little frog in Over the Garden Wall, Jason Funderburker. The way he's animated is just hilarious and very, very cute to me. And I wanted this toad to have a similar, like, kind of blob-like feel. I didn't want him to be, like, an entire cartoon character. I wanted him to be a little bit realistic, but he doesn't have to be fully realistic. Okay, let's see. Maybe I'll move on to these strawberries next. Let me pull up some, a few references. Yeah, I have a couple different references for each of the strawberries, the whole one and the halved one. So I gotta pull those up. I'm not very good, I found it, like, at faking shading. Lighting in general has always been very tricky for me. And so references are very, very helpful when it comes to any sort of shading.
These strawberries were so much fun to draw. Normally it's not like the kind of subject matter I usually do, but I've been intrigued by the idea for, for a really long time now. Um, sometimes when I'm not drawing, and by sometimes I mean every once in a while, I don't do it very often, but I enjoy making like magazine collage. I get to do them a little bit more often at work than I do in my personal life because I often do art with little kids at work. But I think that magazine collage is really interesting. It's always fun to kind of start a project like that with no real idea of how it will turn out. It's very different from how I approach my drawings where I kind of plan out how they're going to look before I've even touched my pencil to the paper. But I do enjoy magazine collage and there was this one magazine that had, I think it was a yogurt ad, but it had these really ripe strawberries that I cut out and put in the collage. And when I did that, I was like, oh, these would be so fun to draw. They're so like, they're such an interesting texture, but never got around to it until now. But I am, I'm pretty happy with how these turned out. It was pretty tricky. I'm not sure I love the strawberry seeds, but it is definitely recognizable as a strawberry and that's gotta count for something. See, I'm shading this strawberry and it's getting kind of tricky because the dot work of my shading is almost making it a little bit trickier to see the seeds. I'm gonna go in and kind of shadow them and make them a little bit more defined, I think, before I continue with the shading. And I might time lapse some of this. I've noticed that it can be kind of hard for me to keep up chit chat when I'm really heavily focusing on a task. So this might speed up for a little while and then return back to normal when, uh, when I have something else to commentate about. Okay, this strawberry is definitely not done. It's definitely going to be undergoing a lot more tweaks. I'm not very happy with the shading on it. I think it mostly just needs some more contrast, but I'm kind of bored of working on it for now. So I think I'm gonna to move to the cut up strawberry. and just start going in and shading that.
After I film a little bit more of this, I'm going to stop and take a break and probably go get ready for the day because later today I am getting my hair cut, which is exciting because I'm getting a, a sizable amount cut off and that's going to be a really fun change. I've been growing my hair out for, I want to say about four years, ever since I cut it short my sophomore year of college. So I'm excited to have short hair again. I think it'll be a fun change. And then today is Saturday, but over the course of next week, I'm gonna be having a really fun time at work. I work at a children's museum and next week I'm co-teaching with one of my coworkers a summer camp that I'm really, really excited about. I've been working on the curriculum for the past couple weeks and I'm very excited. It's for kids ages seven to 10, which is an older age group than I usually work with. During the school year, I typically work with toddlers and pre-K. And so it'll be a little bit different to work with the older kids again. It's not like I've never worked with kids that age group before. It's just not my usual, but I'm excited for it, especially because I know that some of these campers have been coming to the museum for summer camps before the summer. And so they will already kind of be established in the routine that we go through. And that just typically makes it a little bit easier for them to transition into a new week, new teacher, at least some things will still be the same and predictable. But I'm especially excited because this camp is very art focused. And so it's a full day camp, but I will be teaching them in the mornings and my coworker in the afternoons. And in the afternoons, they're working on a big, uh, like building and design project. And in the morning, it kind of just gets to be a free artistic exploration. We're gonna be focusing on tool competency. And so using a lot of different tools to make art with, which I'm very excited about. On Monday, we're gonna be doing a lot of clay working, working with clay tools, which will be fun. Later in the week, we're gonna be using heat tools a lot, doing different melting sort of things, hot glue, heat guns. We're gonna be doing some artwork with drills and hammers, all sorts of stuff that I'm really excited about. And I just got the blocks in this week. We're also gonna be doing some lino cuts, which I'm thrilled about. I remember doing that in one of my high school art courses. Really loving that process. It's so satisfying when you're actually able to make a print and it turns out the way you want it to. So I'm a little nervous that the kids are gonna cut themselves on the carving tools, but mostly I'm really excited. I think they're gonna really love it. I'm also excited for it to hopefully get down to some cooler temperatures. What I'm really excited for, I think, is actually just fall. Fall is definitely my favorite season. I know it is for a lot of people. It's actually part of why I did this drawing. This drawing is kind of like everything that makes me think of summer. Kind of one last summer hurrah before I fully embrace that fall is coming. Hopefully it starts actually being reflected in the weather soon that fall is coming. But I'm excited for it. Halloween has been my favorite holiday for a really long time. I'd love to do a costume this year, but figuring out a costume is always the hardest part. I always have like a million ideas and it's very hard to choose just one. 
but it should be very fun. I have a childhood friend that lives out of state that's going to be coming up to visit for Halloween, which is going to be very exciting because we spent a lot of Halloweens together when we were younger. We went trick-or-treating together and had Halloween parties together. I remember going to like crazy Halloween parties at her college apartment. Yeah, it'll be a really fun time. I can't wait. And I'm excited for a lot of the art challenges that happen around Halloween. Once September and truly October roll around, I feel like in general, I see a lot more drawing challenges, especially on Instagram. And I know a lot of that is like Inktober and Inktober related, but I honestly find myself enjoying a lot of other prompt lists that aren't the Inktober official one. And I feel like in general, people draw a lot of spookier art, which I think is really, really fun. I've been very into kind of exploring the skulls and spooky themes and motifs in my art. I say as I'm shading a strawberry, but again, this drawing is kind of different. It's a little bit different stylistically and thematically from what I usually do. But last, last Halloween, I think I posted on Halloween, if not shortly before, I did a Halloween drawing that was very much this sort of composition in which I had a lot of smaller Halloween-ish related items all on the same page. And that one was so much fun. I really enjoyed how it turned out. And I enjoyed the process of it. It's kind of a kind of a long and drawn out one that tests my patience a little bit just because like you'll finish one object and be like, yes, so accomplished. And then you look at the page and it's still so unfinished. But I'm always really happy with the end result, and so I was like, oh, maybe I should do another one for Halloween. And I was like, I don't have to wait that long. I can just make a drawing in that style for any season if I wanted to. And so I thought I would do one for summer. And so I just thought about all, all the things that kind of make me think of summer. Well, and ones that I thought other people might find relatable for summer. Like, I never wear a sun hat, but I know a lot of people do, so a lot of people might associate it with summer. I'm actually pretty happy with how the cut strawberries turned out. I hope later I can kind of fix up this one and get it to a place that I'm happy with too. The bicycle I really should tackle, but it makes me nervous to shade just because the structure of the bike I know will probably have some complicated shading. And again, I used a composite of reference images and not just a singular one. And that's always a little bit tricky when it comes to shading just because all of them tend to have different lighting. That makes me nervous. I'm not gonna focus on that one yet. I think I will probably do maybe one more piece of the lemon wedge before I call it a day, at least on doing this voiceover portion of it. I'll probably go get ready for my day, go get a bunch of my hair cut off, and then I will probably be done doing the voiceover part, but I am going to try and finish shading this peak this piece through today and tomorrow. And so I'll try to film a lot of it if I can and then just do a time lapse of it. And then I'll probably come back and do a little bit of a chit chat at the end, just to kind of wrap things up and say, I don't know, what I like, what I didn't like about how it turned out. 
So I think I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up the voiceover for now. So thank you for joining me so far. And yeah, I hope the rest of this shading process is at least interesting to watch and I'll see you later.
right, so here is the finished piece. A nice little summery, cottagecore-esque piece to uh, end the season before all the spooky drawings of fall. This was a lot of footage to go through, and I know I did a lot of rambling in it too, but thanks for sticking around, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!